Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I'm going to show you how to make a granny square or tin. So granny squares are really easy to make. They're perfect for beginners and a great way to get into crochet. I've had a lot of you guys ask for a tutorial on how to do these, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So all you're going to need for this project is some yarn, a matching size crochet hook, some fun scissors, a little yarn needle, and maybe a good movie, and that's about it. Let's go ahead and dive right in, and I'll show you how to make these cute granny squares. So I have a variety of colors of yarn here that I'm working with. These are all the Lori Holt Chunky Threads. I'll talk to you about that in a second. Um, but you're just gonna want a fun variety. I like having all kinds of different colors to choose from and then every block is unique. Now you can use whatever kind of yarn you like. I just suggest that you don't use anything too frilly or fluffy or you know feathery or anything fancy like that. If you're a beginner, it's really best to stick to something that's really easy to see and just not gonna have a lot of fluff to it. Now on the back of your skeins of yarn, it's always gonna tell you the size, and then it's also gonna tell you what size um, knitting needles and crochet hooks that you need. So whatever yarn you are getting, you can use any one you want, just make sure that you're getting a crochet hook that fits the size of yarn that is on the back of your yarn ball. And just quickly, I wanted to mention my hooks. These are the Clover Amore hooks, and they come in a whole set of different sizes. They're very common sizes, so one set should pretty much do you for most projects. These are my favorite. They have a nice, soft, non-slippery kind of rubber handle on them. And then this just head has a little bit of a point to it, which I prefer. I think it's a little bit easier to get in and out of your stitches. Of course, you can use whichever hook you prefer. I just wanted to let you know the ones that I'm using. So aside from your matching yarn hook, you're also gonna need some yarn needles. And these are my favorite. These are by Clover. And I will link everything below, but these are just their gold needles. And they have this kind of bend to the end of them. And I just find them really easy to use. So I'm gonna be using one of those today. You're also going to want a pair of scissors. And then if you're gonna block your squares when we're done, and I'll explain that at the end, you are also gonna want a spray bottle with just some water. Some of these T-pins, they are rust proof. And then either a foam blocking board, or I'm actually using my quilter's pressing mat. So I'll show you that at the end. Um, but let's go ahead and get started on this project because these are so fast and easy. Now you can make granny squares all one solid color, but in today's video, I'm actually gonna show you how to make multicolored granny squares. I think they're cuter. Plus I'll show you how to change colors while you're crocheting. So I go ahead and grab some skeins that I like, and then I'm gonna lay them out in the order that I like. And so I'm gonna start with the blue, then the yellow, then the orange, and then the pink. So I can set these three aside and we're just gonna grab our skein that we're gonna start with. And I like to unwind a little bit of it so I'm not fighting with my ball of yarn. You can also put it in a yarn bowl. And the first thing we're gonna do is make a slip knot. So I'm just gonna make a loop like that and then I stick the tail through that loop and I just put it on my finger and then pull. And then I can put it on my hook and pull. And this is kind of a long tail, you don't need it quite that long, but that's just your starting point. Okay, so our slip knot is on our hook and now we're gonna chain four. And to chain, you just wrap your yarn over your hook and then I actually hold the tail between my thumb and second finger and you're just gonna pull that loop through the loop on your hook. So that's one chain. So now we need to do three more. So just yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and one more, yarn over, pull through. So now we have four. And this is what it's looking like. Each one of these little V's right here, one, two, three, four, is your chains. Now we're going to place our hook into this very first chain so that we can join this into a circle. So we're just gonna go right in that chain, just like that. And now we have this U kind of looking thing. Now we're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those loops. So yarn over, pull through the first one, and the second one, and now we're joined and we have this tiny circle. Now we're gonna be doing stitches into this circle, so you wanna make sure that you can see that middle. If you pull it apart, here is the center. Uh, there's a little hole right here because that's where we uh, pulled our yarn through or put our hook through, but this is the center that you're gonna to want to be crocheting into. Now to get started with double crochet, um, we're gonna chain two more to give us a little bit of height so that we're at the height we need for our stitch. Now some people chain three here. I think it looks too sloppy. So you can try chaining two or three and see what you like better and what fits your yarn better. I'm gonna do two. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through once, 
yarn over and pull through twice. That is our chain two. And now that gives us this tall stitch that we can start working from. Next, to do a double crochet, it's really easy. We're just gonna yarn over before we go into the center. Then we're gonna go into the center of our circle and out the other side and then yarn over and pull a loop through. So now we have three loops on our hook. Now we're gonna yarn over, pull through two of those, so that's our first pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two. So that's our second pull through. So a double crochet is basically pulling through twice. A single crochet would be pulling through once, a triple crochet would be pulling through three times um, if you're in the United States. It's a little different in the UK. So here's what it's looking like. That first chain we did is gonna count as one double crochet and then the double crochet we just did is gonna count in as two. We need one more. For this whole project, we're gonna be working in sets of three double crochets. So we have one, two, we need one more. So we're gonna yarn over, again, go into the center of our circle and pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have three double crochets. So let's look at one that's finished. We basically just did this little section right here. One, two, three double crochets. Now we need to make this space for our corner and that's gonna be chaining two. So we've got three double crochets, chain two, then we're gonna do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, chain two, and we'll be back to our beginning. So we're gonna create our corner by chaining two. So yarn over and pull through once, yarn over and pull through twice. So that's our corner. Now we're gonna do another set of three double crochets inside the center of our circle. And by the way, this whole time I'm kind of holding my tail with my circle so that as I'm adding my double crochets, I'm actually stitching, I'm uh, trapping that yarn inside. I'm like crocheting over that yarn so our tail is getting buried as we go. So we're gonna yarn over, go into the center, and here's our tail. I'm kind of going over the top of the tail pull through a loop, yarn over, ah. pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now if this tail gets in your way, don't worry about it. You don't have to uh, crochet over the top of it. I like to do that because it's getting woven in as I'm going. Uh, but if it's in your way or confusing you, then just drop it, we can weave it in later. So we did one double crochet, now we need to do another one. So yarn over, go into the center, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's two, now we need one more. So yarn over, go in the center, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now if we look at it, we've got two of our side units and we have one of our corners. So now we've done three, we need to do a chain two to get that next corner. So chain two. Then we're gonna do another set of three double crochets. So yarn over, go through the center, pull up, Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. That's one. Yarn over, go through, pull through two. Pull through two, that's two. Now we need to do one more. Okay. Now we've got three. We just need one more set and we're at a corner so we need to chain two. Now we need one more set of double crochets. So yarn over pull through, pull through two, pull through two, that's one, two, one more, three. Now we made it all the way back around but we still need to make this corner. So we need to do one final chain two. Now the next thing we need to do is join our beginning and ending so that we can have a perfect finished square. And so I'm always going to join at the top of my original chain. So if you remember, we chained two at the beginning here. We're gonna go find that chain, which is right here. And we're just gonna go into that top stitch of that chain. So go in through both of those legs, yarn over and pull through and pull through. And that's called a slip stitch and now we're joined, but this stitch is live. Like we could keep going if we wanted, so we do need to finish it off. So to finish it off, we're just going to chain one stitch, and then I just pull out a loop. We're gonna cut it so we have a tail, and then just pull that loop through, and then just press that down and tighten it. So here's our finished first round, and if we pull it apart a little bit, we can see that we've got our four corners, 
and then we have our four sides which include three double crochets on each side. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to weave in your ends as you go because I find, especially if you're a beginner, it can get a little bit crazy with all of these threads hanging off the back of your block. Also, I don't like weaving them in at the end. I think it's just overwhelming, so I do it as I go. But you can leave these ends, keep going as I'm gonna show you, and then weave them all in at the end. But let's do it as we go since that's how I do it. So I'm gonna grab my needle and I always fold my yarn over the top of the needle so that I have kind of a clean fold and then push it through. Um, I do that when I'm doing you know, any kind of hand sewing as well. So this is the front of our granny square and you can see this ridge showing up here. If you flip it over to the back side, that ridge is gone and you have these what looks like if you knit pearl bumps on the back side. The back side's just a little bit flatter. It's got some le less definition. The front side's a little bit prettier and it has this ridge. You can see your stitches all the way around the top. So we're gonna weave our ends in from the back side. So make sure you flip your square over to the back side. And now I'm just gonna find something inconspicuous where I can bury this thread. Now it's the same color, so you're not really gonna notice it. Since my other one is coming out here because we buried it as we went, I'm just gonna go down and try and meet that. So I'm just gonna probably grab these two right here and just kind of pull that knot in. Okay, and then these two are semi close together. Now I'm going to thread both of these onto my needle together. And we're gonna bury them together. This isn't really necessary because that first one technically we stitched over as we went, but this is just how I do it. So now I have them both on. I'm again on my back side, And since this one's coming this way, I'm gonna just go ahead and keep going. We wanna bury it through these thicker stitches right here. So I'm just gonna grab my needle and just go through about that many. And I'll just pull it through. And now, as you can see, if you pull tight, you're gonna distort your block. So you just wanna pull that back out so everything's nice and straight. And then we're gonna go back this way, but we can't go back through like this. We need to skip this first stitch so that it will catch. And we're gonna go back through all of those. So there you can see I skipped that first stitch and I'll pull those through. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tug them just a little bit so they're buried, but then I'm also going to reshape my block. And then we can just clip those off like so. And now we have a perfect little granny square started, and now we can move on to our next color. So my next color is this yellow, and we wanna make sure when we're starting that we have our granny square facing up. We don't wanna accidentally have it upside down, and we're always gonna start in a corner. It doesn't really matter which corner you start in, I'm gonna go ahead and start in this one. Now there's a lot of different ways to join your colors. This is just the way that I found works best and it doesn't show any knots in your work. Uh, so if you do it another way, that's totally fine. Um, so I'm gonna take my hook and just go in to the front of that hole and out the back. And then with this hand, I'm going to take my new yarn and I'm just gonna loop it over my hook, just like that. And I'm gonna make sure that I have a little bit of a tail. It doesn't have to be too long. Next, I'm gonna just pull that loop through to the front. Next, I'm gonna yarn over with both threads and pull that through. Now we're joined and I can drop my tail. And a lot of times I'll just hold it with my right hand so that it's just out of the way. And now I need to chain two so that I can get ready for my next rounds. So yarn over and you're gonna pull through both those loops. So that's your first chain and then your second chain. Now we're in a corner and we're ready to go and we can scoot this stitch over so we have room. A lot of times I'll just scoot that over just like that so we have room. We're gonna do two sets of the double crochets in each corner. So we're right here and you can see we have one set of double crochets, another set, and then we've got another chain two because we're on a corner. So this pattern's gonna get really easy really fast. So this is gonna count as our first double crochet. We need two more to complete one set. So we're gonna do one and then yarn over, go through, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's our first set of double crochets. Now because we're in a corner, we need to chain two just like we did on our first round. And now we're ready to do our second set. We're gonna do it in this same hole. So we're gonna have two sets in each corner hole. So yarn over, go through that same hole, pull through two, pull through two. We need another one. And one more. Okay, 
So now we've got our two sets of double crochets plus our chain two creating our corner. Now we're gonna do that in all four of these corners of our first round. So this second round is basically just filling in the corners with two sets of double crochets and a chain two in the middle. Now we're not gonna chain to get from this corner to this corner, I'm just gonna go right in with a double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over, go in, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. So I didn't chain or anything in between there, I'm just going ahead and starting my next corner. So we need two more. So there's our next one, we need one more. Okay, and now so there's a set of three, and if you ever get lost and you can't tell where you are, you can just look at your work. You can even kind of pull these apart so you can see those bars. So we've got one bar, one bar, and one bar, okay? And so that's our three, so we know that we've got three and it's time to chain two. Now if you ever get really lost and you're like, this does not look right, I did something weird. <laughs> Crochet is super forgiving. Just grab your thread and pull, or your yarn, and pull it out till you know where it was correct. Put your hook back in and keep going. And maybe your stitch had just gotten loose so it looked sloppy, or maybe you really did do something weird, uh, but it's really easy to fix. Okay, so there we are, we've got one set, we need to chain two. And now we need to do our next set in the same corner. So we're always gonna be doing two sets of three double crochets in each corner with a chain two in between them. And that's gonna give us that corner space to help keep our granny square square. So here's what we're looking like so far. We've done one corner, we have another corner done, and now I'm gonna go into this corner and this corner the exact same way. Again, I'm not chaining or anything in between the corners. I'm just going right in with a double crochet. So yarn over, pull through, pull through, pull through. Yarn over, pull through, pull through, pull through. That's two. I need one more. So there's three. We're gonna chain one, chain two. Finish off this corner with three more double crochets. One, two, and three. And we have one more corner left to do, this one right here, and then I'll show you how to join back up. All right, so we have finished all four of our corners and now we're ready to join and we're gonna join the exact same way. So here is our initial chain. I'm just gonna go in this top stitch, pull through, pull through, and then to finish it off, again, we're gonna chain one. Let's get this one out of the way. And pull our yarn through and just tighten that up. So now we've got four corners, and each corner has two sets of one, two, three double crochets. So I'm going to weave in these ends just like I did before. Again, I'm flipping over to the back side. So I'm actually gonna bring this one down, and I always go through these little bumps right here because they just seem the most obvious. To get my yarn down there, I'm gonna meet up with this one. So now those two are virtually coming out of the same place. I am gonna cut them off so they're about the same size because that just makes life slightly easier and thread them both on at the same time. And now we're gonna go through the back side of these. You always wanna bury your thread underneath its same color, that way you can't see it. So I'm gonna bring these through these thicker stitches right here. So I just bring them through and I kind of pull it, but I don't want to distort my block again. Now I'm going to, 
Okay, so this is, we've skipped over that first stitch and now we're gonna go back through. And you can just give it a little tug so you can't see it, but you don't wanna distort your block. And then we can just clip those off. And I clip them off, usually hold it kinda of like this and just be careful I'm just clipping those. All right, so there's our back side and our front side of round two. Now we're done with the yellow. We're gonna go for this orange and we're gonna add our orange the exact same way. So here's our anatomy. We've got our four corners, but the only difference now is that now we have a side space because we created that side space when we uh, joined our corners together. So we've got one, two, three, four side spaces, four corners, and so that's what we're gonna be going into. Now be careful when you're doing this like I did here. As you can see, I go right into the hole. I don't go in between my yarns at all. So you're always gonna to wanna to go right into the big hole. So we're gonna join again the exact same way, and again, we're gonna join in a corner. It doesn't matter which corner, any corner is fine. So we're gonna go in through the top. We're gonna to loop our work new color over and just pull that through. We're gonna yarn both of, we're gonna yarn over with both strands and pull those through. Then we can drop our tail, drop our tail, and now we're gonna chain two to get started with our corner. Now since we're in a corner, we're gonna do three sets of double crochets with a chain two in the middle, just like we did on the other one. So that's gonna count as our first one. So we're gonna do a second one and a third one. And if you want, you can stitch over your tail here. It doesn't matter. We're gonna weave it in at the end anyway. And now we're gonna chain two. So there's our first set of double crochets, our chain two. We need one more set in this same hole. So there's one. Two. And three. So here's our first corner, looking just like our other one did. Now we're gonna go into this side hole and we're, gonna, we're not gonna chain in between or anything. I know some people will do one chain in between there just to give the space. I think it makes the block really um, kind of sloppy looking so you can try it, uh, but I just don't chain in between here at all. So yarn over and just go right in this middle hole with a double crochet and you're gonna do three of them per usual we're working in three sets of double crochets for this entire project. So it's gonna get really easy. You'll learn the pattern quite quickly. Okay, so there's our one side. Now we have a corner. So now we're gonna do two sets of our double crochets plus a chain two in the middle. And again, we're not gonna chain until to get into this corner or anything. We're just gonna go right in with a double crochet. So pull through two, pull through two, that's one. Pull through two, pull through two, that's two. Three, oops. Three, now we're gonna chain two for to make our corner. And if you need to, you can kind of scoot these stitches over so you have space over here. I don't like to pile my stitches on top of each other so I'll just scoot them over. And there's one. Two. Three. So if we look at our square, we have two corners done and one side unit. And we're gonna repeat that all the way around. Here's our side. So we just need three double crochets in there. So one, two, three. Now we're back at a corner, so we're gonna do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, all in this corner. One, and two, three, chain two, and scoot them over, three more. One, two, 
three. All right, now we have one more side, a corner and a side, and then we'll be back to our start. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe put some music over this and just work my way around. I'll do it in real time if you want to speed up, you can, but I'm just gonna be working three double crochets into the side and the corners are gonna be two sets of three double crochets with a chain two in the middle. So we're back around and here's our original chain. We're just gonna go into that top stitch, going through both loops. We're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those and then through this one and that's a slip stitch join. Again, we're gonna chain one, Oop. cut our yarn and pull that through and just snug it down and there's our third round. So now you can see this taking shape. Now each round that you do, you're gonna have one more side hole to work through. So now we've got our four corners, but now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight side holes to work through. So you can keep going with this same technique and make your granny square as large as you want. I've seen full pillows done with this. I've actually seen a granny square blanket that is, um, like just one giant granny square, it was really cool. Um, I think I'm gonna make a bag out of this because I love bags, as you all know, and I have a really cute idea for these. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. It'll be an upcoming project um, at the end of this video. So I'm gonna go through, again, bury it through all of these thick stitches, and I'm on the back, so you can't see it at all from the front. Pull that through. And then again, I'm gonna skip this first stitch and go back through those. So same way every single time. You can do this after you're all done. I just like to do it as I go because it gets my extra threads out of the way. And like I said, I don't really like weaving in my ends at the end because it's just a lot. Last color is our pink. We're gonna do this the exact same way as all of the other rows, and then we'll talk about blocking these and how I finish them off. So I'm just gonna pick a corner, any corner, pull up a loop, join them, drop my tail, and then I'm gonna chain two and keep going. All right, now I think you're ready to start burying your threads as you go. So one of the things that I like to do is just crochet right over this new thread. So I kind of lay it on top of my stitches, just like that. And now when I go to do my double crochet, I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna go through the hole. And as you can see, we're trapping that tail when we pick up our next piece. So I'm gonna do, there's my one double crochet. I need to do another one. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna go through the hole. I'm gonna go through that hole and trap my tail when I pull up my new one, and then pull through, pull through. So now my tail is getting buried. Now I'm not going, I'm just gonna do that for this corner. I'm not going to try and keep burying it as I go down because since there's only gonna be stitches here, you'll literally see it laying right on top. So I'm gonna drop it after I get through with this corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do my chain two and then move on with my next set of double crochets. So three of them, so one, two, and three. Now I'm gonna drop this tail so that I'm not, like I said, carrying it on top of these stitches, because you'll see that and just let that go. But now it's semi-buried. 
Now we've got our corner done and we can move on to our next side piece. And I've been holding my crochet hook underhand, I guess, this whole time. I wanted to show you that you can also hold it like this. So if this is causing you any discomfort in your thumb area, or mine hurts like kind of in this muscle right in here, a lot of times I'll go ahead and switch and grab it from the top. I kind of hold it like this, and I use my first finger to hang, you know, kind of hang onto the stitches. Um, and that actually seems to relieve that pressure or tension that I feel in my hand. So I rest my thumb on this flat part of my hook, and now we can continue on just holding it this way. And I find that that uh, really just helps relieve some of that pressure on my hand. So I'm gonna do three double crochets in this side space. All right, and then here's another side space, so I need to do three more double crochets in there, and I'm not chaining in between or anything, I'm just going right in with a double crochet. I do try and make sure that my stitches are kind of even looking. Sometimes if you have, if this loop is too loose and you pull too far when you come in and pull this up, and so that one's tight, and the second one is really loose and floppy, that can make your stitch look really uh, just kind of untidy. So I like to try and keep them nice and even. You don't want it super tight, uh, but you don't want it really loose like that either. Okay, so here are my three double crochets in both side units, and now I'm back at a corner. So I'm gonna do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. So we have here our corner unit, which has three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Then we have a side unit, which just has three double crochets, another side unit with three double crochets, and then a corner unit with three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. And that's what it's gonna look like all the way around and for however many rounds you go. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish going around and I'll meet you back here. I will film it, I'll probably speed it up and put a little music on it. That way you can either crochet along with me or you can watch if you're still needing extra help um, or you can skip ahead and just meet me back at the end. All right, so I'm back around, and this is what I wanted to show you. Sometimes if that middle loop gets too loose, you can end up with a stitch that looks a little bit crazy like this, and I'll just rip that out and redo it. It just means I just didn't have enough tension on this wrap around, the yarn over. That's usually the one that will get loose. So I'll just redo it. Voila, looks perfect. So now we're done and we just need to go back here um, into our top chain. Now I do try and keep this close as well. I don't want it too loose because you have a little, you end up with a little hole there. So we're gonna just slip stitch, chain our one, trim it off, and we're done. All 
Okay, here is our finished granny square. I think it turned out really good. We did four color rounds, so one, two, three, four. And as you get bigger, each time you get bigger, you're gonna have an extra little side hole here to do, but you're gonna do it the exact same way. So let's just take a look. So here is kind of where we started. Here's our first round with a second round added. Here is our block with a third round added. And then here we are with our fourth round added. Now I'm actually going to, I have this white, so I just like picking some kind of a neutral. I'm gonna do another round, so a fifth round with the white on all of the squares. So I'm just making all my colored ones first and then I'll go through and add that white. And then I'm gonna sew it into a really fun project which will be our next video. But um, I'll talk more about that in a minute. The last step for this block, and this is totally optional, is you can block your squares and you can do this in knitting or crochet. And really all that blocking your work means is you lay it out onto a surface, usually a foam blocking board. I don't actually have one, so I'm gonna share with you what I used. So I used my Quilters Cut and Press right there. Um, and this is my mat that I use for my tutorials. And it just so happens to have a little bit of padding in here so I can block my square. And it also has lines on it, which is super handy. Here is sort of the original block. So as you can see, there's definitely a difference, but it's really easy to block. So what you do is you place your square onto either a foam board, or in my case, my cut and press, and then you're gonna just pin the corners. And I'm not really pinning through my yarn, I just pinned into these holes. And you're just gonna shape it so that it's a perfect square, and that's why these lines come in handy. And then I just took a plain water bottle and I just spritzed, spritzed it. I did this last night so it's nice and dry, and we'll take it off here in a second. Um, and you just spritz it so it's nice and wet. It kind of plumps up the yarn, and it also lets it dry in this shape so that it holds its shape when you're done. Now, I didn't have enough of these T-pins. You do wanna use T-pins because they are non-rust, and since we're spraying it with water, you don't want rust marks on your squares. I didn't have enough, so I actually used these little ones, and from what I can tell, I think we're okay. I don't see any rust marks on my square. Um, but now we can just pull these pins out. This has been drying overnight. I'll just lay a bunch of them on here, usually, and do a bunch at once, so I do need to find my T-pins. Um, and then we'll just lay them out, spray them all, and then in the morning, when you go to get them, they're perfectly dry, and look at the difference between those two squares. So this one is definitely a little crazy and wonky. That's the one we just made. And then this, of course, is the blocked one. And you can block. I know a lot of people have said that you can't block acrylic yarn. Um, you actually can. Um, it works better if you use a steam iron. You don't wanna press on top of your block. You just wanna hover over it and just steam on it instead of spray it with water. Um, I've seen people do it with water spray too and it works okay. This is 100% cotton yarn. So cotton or any natural fiber works great with a little spritz of water. And I didn't get it soaking wet. I just spritzed it so that it was damp and then just let it dry overnight. So here is my blocked one and here is my non-blocked one. So as you can see, that really does make quite a bit of difference. And if you have the time and if you care, um, go ahead and block your blocks. It definitely plumps up the yarn. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that on video very well, uh, but it plumps up the yarn and it just looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so that's gonna be it for our Granny Square tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them below. All right guys, that is it for today's video. As you can see, these are so fast and easy to make. I've got a little stack going here and I was originally gonna do an afghan, but now I'm kind of leaning towards a bag because I think a little multicolored granny square bag would be so cute. So if you wanna join me for the bag video, make 13 of these granny scores, make them about five inches by five inches. The larger your granny scores, the larger your bag, obviously. So I'm gonna try and stick around five by five with these, and then I'll show you how to sew them all together and put them into a fun bag project. So that's gonna be it for today's video. If you liked it, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. Also click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you next time. Now we need two chain twos. <laughs> and hopefully you can could see, at, you can do all these little sizes and then sew them together. I'll show you how to, oops. These are the Clover Amour blocks. Uh, <laughs> what is happening, Jax? <laughs> oh my gosh. There, and if I pull it apart, I need a third hand. One. And I need some yarn. You could put this in a yarn bowl. I don't have a yarn bowl.